Now I'll ask you straight up. Do you think genocide is bad? Could I submit an answer in writing at a later date? <laughs> Am I winning this hearing? <laughs> That was just, uh, <clears throat> that was one of the more tamer moments there. Uh, more coming out about that controversial NL, uh, SNL sketch. Uh, mocking Congresswoman Lee Stefanik, a Republican, reports now saying that a comedy show alum, Cecily Strong, was set to play the Republican, pulled out last minute after feeling, quote, uncomfortable. Tom Shalou, Todd Pyro here in studio to talk about this. And gentlemen, good morning to both of you. Let's get a couple things out of the way here. New York Post cover one and then two, Saturday Night Lies. Um, then the headline, Tone Deaf SNL opener proves how little cultural capital the show has now, suggesting perhaps it's irrelevant. It is completely irrelevant. Not only did they miss on the comedy, it shouldn't even been included in the comedy in the first place. And I feel bad. I was harsh to the person who actually did the Stefanik impression. Now that I know she was a last minute replacement, it explains how horrible or why it was so horrible. But all this comes from the top. Lauren Michaels, I don't know if you know this, Lauren Michaels was born in British Palestine in a kibbutz. Okay? He is a Jewish American now, Jewish Canadian as well. How did he let this be in the cold open in the first place? It's unconscionable. The reason is obviously they're trying to get that 18 to 22 year old that everybody loves because of the cultural relevancy. Well, you lost everybody else and it's mm -hmm. gonna send your show down to oblivion. It's, it also was completely unfunny. It, you know what, but that's the barometer for it. At least Stefanik, I love her, okay? And they treated her unfairly in this sketch. She called for an apology, no apologies. No apologies for comedy. The punishment is the fact that the sketch bombed. Right. So that's what you do. When you do you comedy, an apology. you get rewarded with laughter, yeah. or if people don't like it, that's, that's your punishment. Mm -hmm. This thing about apologies, I think it's ridiculous. Actually, the sketch was definitely tone deaf, but it was only because they were writing the sketch, and I think, yeah. I, I, I can only assume, some of the writers were like, look, we can't not make fun of Republicans in this sketch, too. Uh, but when the thing started out, it was all about Elise Stefanik, and it was rather shrill and kind of off-putting, right? Then they went into the sketch, and they did try to make fun of these uh, college Presidents. deans and the presidents. Uh, but by that time, there was a bad taste in your mouth yeah. of the whole thing. You know? So the Post says the opening sketch is always the last sketch to be written. And I think the reason for that is because they wanted to be contemporary. They wanted to be a reflection of the news. Um, uh, you guys have not seen a show. I have. Um, they do a rehearsal show earlier in the night. Then they make amendments and edits and do the show live later, 11.30 Eastern time. I, I, maybe they bump this sketch up. But what we really need to know is who was present at the rehearsal and then how did it come out later on the real show that we all saw? I, I saw that sketch. Can you believe anybody even in a rehearsal no, would I can't. laugh at that? <laughs> I but, don't but think Lee, it's, it's, it's Strong said, I'm out of here. And you're exactly right about Lauren Michaels. How, I'm uh, assuming he was present that night. How could he say this is okay? I feel like maybe he's lost control of that show. I don't mean to, you know, be, you know, presuppose, but also maybe somebody like Chuck Schumer, who just last week ended up speaking out against the horrificness, kind of went, I don't know, six, seven weeks. Maybe he was sort of quelch into silence yeah. a little bit. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense why somebody who's gone through the experience that Lauren Michaels has would allow that to appear on his show. He's not just the, uh, uh, the head of it. He's the king of it. Tom, do, they, do, do shows like SNL, do they care about criticism like this? Well, I, the thing I disagree with about the post, they said this shows that this, uh, you know, the, the cultural significance of the show is in the past. I don't think so. We're still talking about it. They put a sketch on there, the sketch bombs, and everyone's talking about it for days, and people are asking for apologies, and uh, mm -hmm. politicians are quoting it. Yeah, I agree. It. I think the show still has cultural power because... So how do they come back this week? Well, uh, we'll see. I mean, maybe they'll poke fun of themselves. Maybe they'll, you know, it would be great if they did a little writer's room thing and they poked fun of the writing process. Yeah, yes, yeah, self-deprecating well, humor. Yeah, okay. Here's a way they could sort of gain a lot of good attention for themselves. Be funny. <laughs> You're a comedy show. Hey, you just made Try me laugh. It. Good job, Todd. But <laughs> don't, not, don't leave us for SNL. I won't. Not Good this to have week. you both. Great to see you. Yeah, Thank thanks. you so much. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.